Do you want to sew a snowman? Come on, let's go and sew. He doesn't melt now anymore. He's on the door. Looks like he's gonna stay. I'll show you how to make him. It's not too hard. I hope you will come and try. Do you want to sew a snowman? A refrigerator snowman. Please subscribe. Hi! I'm so glad that you've decided to try to do this with me. The first thing that you'll want to do is even out your sides of your half of a yard because like mine it was plaid. So the lines were a little bit uneven. If you have a solid color, you may not need to do this. I just thought it looked better if the sides were even. The second step that you'll do is fold it in half lengthwise. It doesn't matter if the right sides are together or not. And then you'll cut it to be half of the width. So you'll cut it lengthwise. After you get it cut, lengthwise in half. You'll fold it right sides together and sometimes it's harder to tell but with this one you can definitely see there's a darker green and it looks crisper. So you'll fold it right sides together with the fold on the right hand side. Then you'll stitch about an inch and a quarter or so from the selvage edge straight across and do that with both pieces. As you can see, I'm doing this part by hand, but you can do this on the machine if you have a sewing machine. It will definitely go faster. You basically just want the extra fabric, the seam allowance, to be large enough to hide your magnet when it's folded over. So if you're using different magnets than mine, just make sure that you have enough to fold over and hide them. Now let's start with the magnets. So for one side, you'll place your hand in and fold the seam allowance up and sew your magnets underneath both of these layers. I suggest having at least three magnets per half of the scarf and space them out pretty nicely so you can always come back and add more should you need to. So here I'm just going to show you really quick how I secure, oh that was really long, one magnet. I tend to do a little bit of a circle around each one. So I just sewed around the first magnet and I have this little pin here to make sure that it'll be pretty even when I put in the other magnets. And the reason you want to tuck him under both of these edges is so that there is the least amount of resistance between him and the fridge because this fabric is so thick that it's difficult for it to hold up even with just one layer. So this is what it looks like from the correct side. So now, hi there! So I have three of my magnets sewn in and it turned out that there wasn't room to put them if I centered this one there wasn't room to put extra magnets if I would have centered this guy. So I pushed him up to the top since that's generally where it's going to be heavier. So I can fit another one if it gets too heavy right in between those two. So this side is finished for now, but we'll come back to it to do the finishing steps. So I guess I just lied to you. Sorry. Set that one aside. Ooh. So in order to get a mirror image with the scarf, and so it will sit on the fridge correctly, you want to take this side, put your hand in it again, but this time fold your seam allowance down, and then sew your magnets, ah, sew your magnets underneath this way. So, so now we're going to move to the opposite end where we will fringe. Make it look like a cute scarf with fringe. 
So this step is a lot of personal preference, but don't worry, I will give you directions because I hate when someone's like, oh yeah, and just do whatever you want. It's like, well, can you just tell me how you did it, please? <sighs> oh well. So I'm going to cut off, and it's okay if it's not completely straight, but again, this is easier if you have a striped or a plaid, whatever. So then I'm going to cut up to make the fringe at about three and a quarter or about the length of the scissors that seems to be the best method for me because it it's an even I don't have to think about it I can just do it and I usually space it about every half inch normally I cut about an inch apart and then come back and do a half an inch I'm usually not holding it this close to my face. So you'll do this to both edges of your scarf. And then your scarf is ready to be hung on the fridge. Hmm. Who knows what we'll do next? It's orange. And it's kind of carrot-like. So for this next part, we're going to do the nose, in case you couldn't guess by my sarcastic pun. Uh, we'll need one sheet of orange felt. The color is up to you. I chose a brighter, happier orange, maybe? Obnoxious? Probably and you actually don't need the whole sheet, so if you have some leftover fabric, you should totally be fine. We will be using a sheet of paper as a template, unless you're brave and you just want to go ahead and cut it out of your felt right away. So you will be making a triangle that is four by nine by nine and three quarter. That's a bit easier for you to see, isn't it? We'll try that. Basically, it's a four by nine rectangle cut diagonally. So you'll be using this piece here. Bonus, I just realized, if you draw it out like this, you only have to cut one line. Oh, that just made my day. If you don't want to stick pins through paper and dull them, I mean, I don't find that to be that big of a deal, but sometimes it's better if you have a little chalk and it won't show up because you can just turn that side, turn that to the inside. So just draw this diagonal line along your little template. There it goes. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there, I promise. And then flip it. And since this is a 9 inch by 12 inch, or whatever I said it was, yeah, 12, you can just not have to worry about cutting the length off. Or the width, the length or the width, whatever. You choose. It's a fun noise, right? So as you can see, I have my little triangles cut out. So you will want to put them matching and then I used a half inch seam allowance, so you lose a little bit of the nose tip, but it still works out really well. And then you'll trim the excess away so that this will make a nicer point and place the magnets inside. So here is my finished nose. I have two magnets and you can probably see them. There's one on my left thumb and one on my right thumb. I secured them by sewing from here and taking this the needle like here I'll just show you if there's not a knot in that is there no nope, no knot so I took a knot or oh gosh I took the needle from the inside but you don't always have to do that and then just sewed through like that so it doesn't show up on either side this is the side I put on the fridge you can kind of see because it's wearing away in a few places but in order to secure this magnet here, I just stitched a couple of times, like that. And this part actually goes faster, not the magnets, obviously, but the nose goes faster if you do it on the machine with a half inch seam allowance and then leave a space for turning it. I believe, yeah, I did this side, I left this side open, and then just stitch that closed. Turn it inside out, stitch it closed by hand. So on that same note of puns, I wonder if you can guess what we're going to do next. That's right! Let's do the eyes and the buttons and coal and yeah, all that good stuff.
So there are his eyes. And then I made three in the large size for the buttons on his chest. And then you'll need, I used seven of these little guys, this size that's uh, size small. I made seven of those because it gives you a good range of smiley face options. So I'll show you how to make one of those with the Clover Yo-Yo Maker. Again, this is the size small. And it says on the back 30 millimeters. And it makes a yo-yo with a magnet inside of it that size. I'll show you how to do that really quick. So this is where your fat quarter of black fabric comes in. Ta-da! If you're using a clover yo-yo maker, go ahead and take the disc out, but leave the words facing you. Set that aside. And find, as you can see, I got more than a fat quarter. Wasn't sure how much you'd need, so sorry. Um, you want to do this. Oh, sorry, wrong way. You want to have the fabric right side down. And then give yourself probably a good quarter inch around. Oh, hello. And then... If you can, you can see these little lines, and then there's also three blurbs, blobs, uh, little friends. There's these little dudes. So try and match those up. So I will tend to stick one under my thumb, and then that way I know that the spokes will match up with the smiley face looking things. And then, it's easier to see from this side. Oh, everything's flying away. Cut about a quarter inch seam allowance. Or more. Generally more is safer. All the way around. You can also use, there it is, a two and three quarter inch circle template and you will get the same size. So from here, grab your handy dandy needle and thread with a big old knot on the back of it. Yeah, and then you'll sew. So you come through, and I like to find out where I was so it's easy to keep track of where I am. And you'll go not sure if you can see that. You want to come up on the right side if you're right-handed, or if you're going counterclockwise, and then go down on that side. And then you'll come up and get a knot in the thread. So you'll come up, go back down, and make sure you're catching your fabric on this side, because that's the whole point. So when you've gone all the way around, you actually want to overlap one. So this is my first spot where I came up, but my thread, my knot wasn't large enough, so it escaped. So I'm actually going to overlap two, and that's just fine. Leave your thread and needle attached, and even, haha, -ha, extra magnets come in handy. Then, poop. So then this is free, and it has escaped. Carefully remove the inner disc. And then you will take a magnet and have him prepared to jump in this. Then you'll start to gather up your thread and push it, push the fabric inside. But don't close it all the way yet. And then you'll plop the magnet in the center and finish closing this up. Try not to break the thread, because that's frustrating after you've gotten this far. Just like that. 
So from there, you will secure your thread. Make a couple knots so that magnet cannot escape. <laughs> Stuck in there forever. And then I like to hide my end. And then I pull it tight and snip it. So there you go. Oh, this one's kind of loose. Ah, it's okay. Hi. Let's decorate our refrigerators. Cool. So, take the two <gasps> height, yay. The two for the eyes, so hard to see. Yeah. And at this point, it's best if you have these flipped right sides out. And remember the side where you can see the circles. Let's turn the light on. Here we go. Circles versus no circles. You want that side on the fridge. should be opposites. And then tie your little snowman scarf on so he stays nice and warm. And if the length bothers you, you can either tie it again, because mine's on the floor. I don't think you can see. You can tie it again, or you can adjust the length. his little bellies, buttons on his belly, and now comes the fun part, the nose, controller. and then you can make all kinds of goofy faces, if you have little ones, I'm sure this would be a very fun activity. You can kind of smirk, or all kinds of good fun stuff. So for now, let's just give him a happy little smile. So there you go. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that your snowman is as happy as mine. Feel free to send me pictures. I'd love to see.